It's been nearly three decades that Zender Snowfest began, and we're going to learn a little bit more about the history and joining me now is John Shelton. Hi there, John. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, first thing, tell us how Snowfest even began. We were looking for an opportunity here at Zender's. Uh, the, how do we change the business cycle? Uh, historically, uh, in the wintertime, it was all about cutting expenses, trying to wait, get to the spring, get to Easter, get to Mother's Day. And our peak of our business really was like from July 1st to the end of the year. So we were looking for ways of trying to figure out how do we generate more revenue. And I had just joined the company back then, so I was naive enough to think we could do it. And so we were approached by a local artist, uh, Pete Rumsey and his partner, Bill Doring. They came to us because we knew, they knew we knew about tourism, marketing, and they pitched this idea. Thought about it and said, okay, let's take a risk. And the first year we had about 90,000 people. In fact, it's interesting, that first year we had nine ice sculptors, and the ice sculptors were from friends of John Zender at the time, was our food and beverage director and executive chef. And you know how you do ice carvings that you see on a nice buffet? That's literally what we did. And I remember a guy, Larry Weatherholt, was from Illinois, and they did like this cool Indian piece. It was like right away, it was like, oh, this is something no one had ever seen before. It was tremendous. But then we kind of realized, okay, how do we really try to start massaging this and make this grow? And it really happened with my son at the time. I had two little boys, three and five, and they start complaining it was cold. And right away I figured, you know what, I'm probably not the only parent going through this process of having a kid kind of get a little bit agitated and want to go home because there's nothing for him to do. And for some reason, I just started saying to myself, if I can entertain kids, I think we got something special. So that's when we decided next year, let's put a tent up. So we put a tent up, but we didn't heat it. So it's still kind of cold. So the following year, we decided let's heat the tent. And then we start putting in the petting zoo. We start doing fireworks. We start merchandising the Snowfest logo. And it just took off from there. So, you know, we average about 100 to 150,000 people on an annual basis. What's it like seeing the growth from 33 years ago till now? I'm proud of the fact that it is. It just started out as a business venture. We were trying to look at ways of how do we change our business cycle and grow as a company. I'm gratified the fact that it's just not us to grow. The entire business community uh, was successful and is successful because of Snowfest, but it also because we started involving schools and now we started really kind of perpetuating the art form. Why was it important to essentially think outside of the box when you guys had that original goal of, you know, changing the well, business strategy. Well, you do the same thing the same way and expect different results. Einstein tells you that's insanity. So we knew we had to just do something to, but we didn't know what it was. Overall writing theme for us have always been, we want to be the leading family destination in Michigan as well as the Midwest in all four seasons. All right, awesome. Well, tell the people when Snowfest is. Snowfest 2024, January 24th to the 28th, and we kick it off with our All Things Chocolate Baking Contest, and we thank our sponsors, Michigan Sugar, and we always go to Sunday the 28th. A lot of entertainment, a lot of things to do, so we just encourage everybody to come out and visit us and enjoy Snowfest 2024. All right, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you chatting. My pleasure.